What's going on? We're back with another Backrooms uh, reaction video. We're doing damage control. Let's do it. Alright, starting off with whatever that is. These segments. Last time, I don't really remember the, the short one that people was showing, but last one was the one where the guy got killed by the crazy guy or whatever. What the fuck? I can only wonder what that is. Yep. So I learned that that's the guy from the pitfalls one. Not the guy that got shot, I learned, but I learned the guy that was filming and then saw his friend get shot was the guy from pitfalls. I'm going to try to not show the time stamps. On it. It's better when you don't know when it'll be over, honestly. Scary guy right there. Make sure I was recording my voice and like didn't forget to turn that on or something. Didn't, like, like I didn't forget to turn that on or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm a little confused right now. I think this is following up the events of the last video. That was like one of these episodes. Crazy dude's just running all out all over the place. Dude's got speed. Sh that guy should be. That guy shouldn't be working in the backrooms. That guy should be an Olympian. He would win easily. I'm so confused about this. I don't, I don't get what's happening. That dude's just running so fast, though. Wow. Do you have to be like a professional runner to be working at the backrooms headquarters or something? I, I don't know. My volume's a little loud. It's good, it's good to have loud volume, but not like, not where it's. So my volume's not that loud, but that's the thing. Uh, I don't it's metaphorical for this episode, I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, no, because it wasn't that long since then. Dr. Beck? Like the singer of Beck? We got Beck working here? Now, it appears that the situation has reached a point of some stability. Uh, we're still looking into a few things, uh, but I feel that we cannot properly address what occurred without running into speculation. Okay. What happened last night should not have happened. Okay. Not here. De if you're not referring us. to the crazy guy shooting that what other guy, then yeah. Was right. a gross misunderstanding. That was the result of some severe information Okay, clearly, clearly they're not talking Even about that. I have no, I I have no idea. I still have an incomplete idea of what took place last night. Well, that's that. Well, maybe it was that. Uh, so, uh, before I fill you in, I need to address the fact that there has been information deliberately withheld from many of you on the project. Okay. Uh, now, these choices were not made lightly and were done for only the best of reasons. However, I want to make it abundantly clear that following the events of last night, it has been proven to us that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable. So, I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we understand them. Okay. On the morning of March 1st, a team of four researchers was sent into the complex to conduct their routine layout analysis. George Levy, Marvin Lee, Ronald McCarthy, and Peter Tench. At around 12.25 p.m., the group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing a previously accessed branch of hallways. As you'll recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. However, like it uh, those ultimately yielded nothing, and as far as any of us were concerned, Tench had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. So one of them vanished, now, I kind of missed that. For obvious reasons, that wasn't something that we could disclose to the public. So roughly two weeks following his disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away 
from this institute and provide closure to the family. Uh, so that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident. However, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Yeah, no, this is Regardless, talking about the guy that died. Our potential involvement in this came to an end. Or at least that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th at approximately 5.30 p.m., a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Okay. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a situation. There goes my computer's power cord. Over the following days, a I'm using a laptop, yes. able to administer a panel of tests in order out. to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he'd been gone. Uh, those tests yielded very little useful information. By all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still I'm trying to like. Okay, God, I was trying to plug it back in. Uh, oh, like, still the watching the video because I don't want to lose track. I feel like this is all important. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession. And in fact, yeah, no, to be honest, I'm really confused. The, entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today. However, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. This is the hallway where Peter was last seen. They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the bridge to the right here... Someone in the comments needs to explain this to me. Guys, can you hear this? The hell? Now, I'd like to save the discussion for afterwards, but what you just saw is what we believe to be the moment that Peter was instantaneously transported two months forward in time. Following that abrupt flash you just saw, Tench proceeds back out to the hallway in search of his team, but it is without any indication of the presence. The next 30 or so minutes of the tape uh, follow a fairly panicked attention as he attempts to navigate his way back to the threshold. He does obviously find his way back. However, the threshold appears not as he knows it, but as it appeared on the date of May 8th. And this ties us back to the moment when we recovered him. So, uh, to summarize, from his point of view, he had only been inside the complex for several hours. Uh, so to him, all of the new developments surrounding the threshold were completely foreign. Uh, luckily, though, as I already mentioned, there were people available to manage the situation as it unfolded. And over the course of the following days, we were able, we, able to uh, properly sit down with Peter and work with him to gain a collective understanding of what had happened. Right. However, there was still the very significant fact that Mr. Tench was considered legally deceased as a result of the cover story, and reversing that would be no easy feat. He understood this and was willing to cooperate while we looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had. I'm still so confused on what's, what and all was happening. Peter was out here, was Peter the guy that shot the dude? I don't even know. I don't know. This is I'm lost. It is hard to combat the effects of prolonged sensory deprivation on the human brain, and as a result, Peter's mental state took a toll. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, but around the end of week two, we noticed that he was starting to exhibit a number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Though we don't have reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, while he didn't express it outright, from what we could gather, he appeared to have deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex, and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. This all came to a head on the night of the 22nd, when, while Tench was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above-ground residence, he broke away from us and 
using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C. Oh shit, it is him. Dr. Bloom in critical condition. Shit, that was him. Okay, ties together. I can presume that during the Chiruso days, Temps spent in the complex. I think, I, I don't know. I'm still I think that, 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 that the guy they're talking to was the crazy guy that shot the dude. Still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way. I'm gonna guess so. Exactly the opposite. That's what I'm gonna assume. Maybe I'm just not paying enough attention today. This whole series is just a big mystery. This whole series, man. Where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing to standard and through the lower offices. Never thought that such a series would come from a weird looking picture of an empty room. Several moments longer than you ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and Who's Dr. Maxwell? To disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process. What so, the hell? However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Tired. Now, I'm tired. This situation Wait. could have played out very badly given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But luckily for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Right. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. Now, All right. there's no easy way to say this other than she just stands. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside. Okay. The result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell forward Ow. into a large rock. What a... Given the circumstances, way to go. it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a really man who gave his all to this project. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is Rest so in much peace. than one person. Rest in peace. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. Okay. We hold on to the priest that was Rest in peace, Mr. Tench. Peter is, and has been, deceased. That is done, and there is nothing more to be extracted. I'm so confused. Truly. Is that it? No. I don't get it. A lot, someone needs to comment and explain and just fill me in. I, I, I don't understand what I just... I, I, I do not get what I just watched. I understand parts of it. I definitely get parts of it. This whole series is just a big blur to me. Like, um, Not the band blur, but it's just a, a blur. Um, like, ugh. This, this is some sort of project. I'm trying to figure out what the backrooms is. is a project. The backrooms is a project. I mean, it seemed like it was going to be some project or something from the earlier episodes, but I can't really tell. I cannot tell what this is. Um. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.